Hello, people. How you doing tonight? I am here. This is Lee Cole from Wrestling with the Devil. I'm here with James Proctor, who has decided to come over and help out tonight. Yeah. And I went over to his channel today, and we did something over there. Yeah. And the link to that channel is underneath here if you want to watch some good mob stuff. Okay, we'll just. I'm just gonna see who's here right now. It's it's coming in slow tonight. Usually it's uh. Okay, let's see. Yeah, maybe the notifications. Uh... It's yeah, they're coming weird. in now. But yeah, but that's you know that's what sucks about the notification. A lot of people don't get them, and you always hear those complaints. And that's YouTube. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. We got uh, we got the truth. I'm t tickled pink. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me get this out of here. Turn this. Okay. Okay. Then. Uh, Steven Rogers, uh, save me a ringside seat, Lee. Okay, you got the ringside seat, Steve. Get over here. Okay, we got Chad Mc McDonough. The game. Okay, yes, we're going to talk about the game tonight. We're going to talk about Triple H. Uh, Renee, uh, Cafe Renee said some interesting stuff, and he knew him personally because he worked with him. And not only did he, what he's saying about Triple H, I've heard it from several people that, I've worked with him that know him and it's it's kind of what they said about him and uh how he is now how much different he is yeah and he's coming out in a couple books too ronda rousey just wrote a book and the man you know that woman wrestler the the, Engl uh, the irish woman yeah yeah just a second yep that's the body okay. it was phase b it's going to be good yes we're going to try to make it good ferocious time to expose the game Okay, Wayne, how you doing, Wayne? I hope Vince McMahon will come back to the WWE someday. <laughs> but we're going to talk about that too. We're going to actually talk about where is Vince McMahon? Is is he still hanging around? Uh, once again, Cafe Renee said something interesting on that. So I like that show. And being that he's an insider, he knows a lot of things people don't know, James. Yeah. So uh, I kind of respect Well, he's willing him. to actually talk about it too, you know. <laughs> What's up, Lookman Thomas? How you doing, Renee? How you doing, Renee? Good to see you here, Mustang Mike. James Proctor up here in the house. John Asklowitz, my man Lee, have another great video for us. We're gonna try, my man. Scott Zilla, how you doing, Sean? It's good to see you here. I know that you're working right now, so thank you for showing up, Chris Capello. It's good to see you, like always. Terry Santiago, welcome. Great Jedi, how you doing? Okay, so we got, uh, Renee says, I guarantee you Triple H has all kind, oh, he does. Okay. Okay, so we're going to wait until we pick up a little bit, but James. Yep. What do you think right now, um, I was going to get into Mel Phillips tonight a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to talk about some stuff that's going on with Mel Phillips. We're not going to get too much into it because okay. I really can't, but I can get into, I'm going to get into some of the basics on Mel Phillips and some of the things that have been popping up uh, on him. Okay. I'm glad you love the show, Terry. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, you know, Lee, the thing is with, with I know we won't get in too deep with Mel Phillips, but, it's interesting to me that there's more stuff popping up. Yeah. A lot a of lot evidence of now. A lot of stuff. Yeah. And uh, James, uh, great Jedi says you should, we, I, he was watching our show before I'm just taking that. You should take my seat. You know, we should switch around, <laughs> but I always, I, you know, something I always feel better on the right. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of it, you know, with we use StreamYard, and so um, for both shows, and so and we, it's interesting. Um, it's pretty powerful, actually. It's just I'm trying to learn how to use the thing, you know. Well, StreamYard has a lot of things, a lot of good facets to it too. And uh, yeah. uh, if you're anybody out here is going to start a show, Zoom is good, but it's not. It's not what you use to do a YouTube show. Right. And if you want to get the best, uh, it, it, and StreamYard is actually better than using YouTube, if mm -hmm. you ask me. 
Yeah. Mustang Mike, how you doing? Ben, been watching your uh, replays, learning a lot about wrestling again. Well, that's good to see you, Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we got 55 in the house. We'll wait for a few more to get in here. And we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, but so I had this one guy that he used to, um, he came up with uh, Triple H. Um, okay. And Triple H was always known as a real dickhead. You know, uh, he wouldn't say hi to nobody. He always thought he was better. Very snobby type of guy. Right. And when you look at him, he comes off like a very snobby type of guy. Marine Frick, how you doing? Joe Root, how you doing? Okay, so he always came off as a very snotty guy. Yeah. But now there's two books coming out, one by Ronda Rousey and one by The Man, and uh, that's Becky. And they both said the same thing. They actually like him. Hmm. And they said that the company is, uh, when, when he's there, they like him better than Vince McMahon. There's less drama. He's more strict. But the fact of the matter is this. For 20 years, for 20 years, he was at Vince McMahon's side. Vince McMahon treated him better than he treated his own son. So right. Renee, Cafe Renee said something last night that really made me think. He says that he thinks that Vince is still inside that business through his son-in-law. What do you think about something like that? And what do you guys think when you hear that? Well, you know, I... They, you know, it, it's obvious the relationship was very good. You know, I, in my opinion, you know, when Vince was, had the problem with his daughter, you know, when, when all of that drama was happening, I thought there was a problem between Vince and Paul, but I guess it's not, you know, so I could see Vince definitely, you know, you have a relationship with someone for 20 years, a professional relationship like that. I mean, I have to think that he still talks to Vince. He asks questions. He gets advice. I mean, people do that. That's a normal thing. And uh, even though, you know, Vince no, is but, toxic. But Cafe Renee said this. And give me an honest answer what you think to this. He, he basically thinks Vince still is in there running things. Hmm. You know, I... But it, it seems like he's doing stuff differently with Paul running. I mean, with Triple H running, it, it's um, with the talent and all that. It seems like they're doing stuff. I'm, the, the quality of the talent's a little better. You know, things are starting to be on an upward swing. So I don't know. That That's a good thing. I mean, he's more of an insider than I am talking about Renee. So it's, you know, it, it could be possible. I could see Vince trying to do that. I'm, you know, I, I could see, I don't think he wants to lose control. So it is possible. Uh, Gino Chavez says, not going to get rid of Vince until the, you get rid of Paul, Bruce, Michael Hayes, and all Vince's goons. Vince is still running things. Well, what do you think about that when he says something like that? He, you know, he just, I mean, he it puts can some happen. Good, that's some good points that he put out there. He, you know, these are guys that have been very close to him. And uh, so, you know, well, they're that more he, loyal to Vince than Vince is to them. So I could, I could see it. I actually could see it. You know, I was hoping that, uh, that there was some sort of bifurcation where Vince wasn't involved, but maybe not. Okay, and then uh, Peter Piper says, uh, Triple H is the ultimate politician behind the scenes. He and Hulkster, all-time politicians, used yep. to push their careers at the, the determinant uh, of each other, detriment of each other. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed Well, Peter Piper, you're absolutely right about that. So what about when with Triple H with his health issues and all of that, do you think that might have made, sometimes when people go through health crisis, it changes them. It's interesting, Ronda Rousey, and then the man is saying that they like him. You know, I know that he had this negative, um, you know, people didn't like him. You know, like you said, he was standoffish. He was, uh, thought he was better than everyone. And um, maybe he's changed just because of health, you know, who knows? And, you know, it's funny, too, because Ronda Rousey wrote something very funny in her book. She wrote that uh, Becky Lynch, well, well uh, not be not Becky Lynch, but someone was wrestling uh, Flair, uh, 
Flair. And mm-hmm. she like said Flair. that Flair, Flair put her big dick on the table. That's how, uh, that's how um, it was described by Ronda Rousey, saying that, oh, God. that Flair had a big dick. Uh, and she said That's it, funny. people thought it was a negative way. It wasn't. She was saying that um, they wanted to end the match early. Mm-hmm. And Flair said, no, 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 let's keep it going. Let's give them what they want. Mm. And one thing about a Flair, they can wrestle for an hour. Yeah. I mean, Ric Flair would be drunk, come into the ring, alcohol pulling, pouring out of every pore of his body, mm-hmm. but he would still be in that ring. Yes. He'd be in there for an hour and he'd be wrestling. And he didn't do this wrestling where you're laying against the ropes and someone's laying on top of you and you're, are you laying on the ground and they got you in a leg lock and you're resting? That was never Ric Flair and his daughter's the same way. Right. No, I mean, it, it's interesting that even at his age, you know, I, I looked at some of his um, matches from, you know, maybe five, six years ago. And when, you know, definitely, you know, he's not in the type of shape he was in, you know, 30 years ago, but, you know, those matches still lasted a long time. And so he was still out there the whole time and didn't slow down on the, uh, as far as, you know, he's, he's got that um, stamina, I guess. And when a guy like uh, Cafe Rene says something, you know, you got to respect it because, you and do. I'm not kissing his ass or nothing. I'm just talking about legitimately, there's people that are close. Uh, they keep in contact with people. Uh, right. They know they came up to the schools with these people through training with these people. They know these people. They do. So our problem is me. I'm not. I'm not from the wrestling world. I know. I, I know a lot of people in the wrestling world, but I'm not from the wrestling world. These right. guys are from the wrestling world. They're, if you get in the ring, you're from the wrestling world. Yeah, and that's why you know. For me, if, if he's Saint Renee saying something like that, then you've got to listen to it. it it's kind of like in the mob genre when you know we're talking about Mikey Scars. You know, he was there with those guys, and so he, you know, when someone like that that was around actually has something to say, you know, uh, you might not agree or whatever, but you should listen to him. And Renee's the same way. He's he's been around. So, and, and you know, it's funny though. And you know, it's funny these guys. I love the crowd, the wrestling crowd in here, because some of you guys are like, like in the mob genre, you know your mm-hmm. shit. I learn a lot from you guys. Oh, yeah. So whenever you want to put stuff up, and I'm just reading your stuff here, it's very interesting, and I appreciate it. Uh, Gino says, Some, something to consider. Dwayne owes his career and fame to Vince, without a doubt. He does. The placing of Dwayne on the board in the heavy presence, is this TKO or is this Vince still in control? Me thinks Vince. See, that's the thing. Vince is, even though Vince is 78 years old, people make him into this thing like, you can't kill the monster. <laughs> yeah. He's like the monster, and, and, and you can't kill him. I don't understand. Why does he even need to even be there? Why doesn't he just go off and retire, just stay away and enjoy whatever his life is, you know, I don't. Because it's an ego thing, James. It's an ego yeah. thing. It's like when you when you're in control and you're on top all those years. Yeah. You want to be. Hey guys, I'm going to put the invite down. If anybody wants to jump up here and join us, you're more than welcome to come up here and join us as long as you're not bringing your pee pee to show us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a link right there. Okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, people. Yeah, and everyone, now. please hit the like button as well, if you. Could. Yeah, please and hit that like. Let's see what we got in the like right now. We got, we got thirty-two in the likes, eighty-eight in the house. So if you can hit it, I appreciate it. Okay, Saber says. Uh, Saber says, for now, Hunter is. I do see Triple H getting fired or leaving the company, just not right now. He knew what Vince was doing. Yeah, that's the thing, Saber. You, you, you hit it right on the button. If they are really going after Vince like they're supposed to be, I mean, you have the feds looking in, in on it. You got a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Yeah. If they're really going after Vince, look what we just seen the other day. We seen them going after uh, the rapper. What's his name? Oh, again? yeah. Uh, that's just, that. that's not going to end well, it doesn't look like. Yeah, they're going after people. They're not. Diddy they're really or whatever, legitimately. Sean Combs. Yep, Sean Combs. They're going after him, and look what happened there. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but see, Triple H, he knows where the skeletons are. There's no doubt he knows where the skeletons are. You know, Lee, what's interesting, though, is it's it's pretty similar, don't you think, between what happened with Sean Combs, the, you know, the hip-hop artist, and he's accused of sex trafficking. Same thing with uh, Vince McMahon. And it's interesting, though, what they did. They they raided uh, all of the properties that Sean Combs had. And so I don't know what happened when the – did the feds go through that process with Vince? No, no. It, no, they did, but they didn't do it like all strong-armed and stuff. I yeah. mean, they didn't go in there pulling people out. When they went into Sean Puffy Combs, they – they treated everybody in those houses like they had guns or they were crazy. Why did they know? do that and not with Vince, though? Because they don't, they're not going to run in there and know that they don't, Vince ain't going to like pull out guns and stuff. I mean, it's it's a whole different situation. You're talking about uh, businessmen, gangbangers, mm -hmm. you know, it's two different things. They're going to yeah. think about their agents being safe. Right. No, no, I get it. And there were uh, people in the homes. It wasn't just, um, an empty house then. And there were guns. They talked about guns being part of the Puffy Combs, uh, of the Sean Combs thing. There right. Was that was part of the complaint. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense then. Triple H, 1999 to 2003, Reign of Terror had belts at all the important pay-per-views, buried Booker T and others, so he knows how to carve out his path. Yes, he did. He Listen, what he did to Booker T, he ran over Booker T. like a, He just ran right over him. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, if Booker T was much more talented in the ring, uh, uh, Triple H is talented, but but Booker T was much more talented. That's just my opinion. Right. Who is no? Uh, yeah, well, Becky Becky Lynch. Uh, okay, Becky Lynch is very popular right now. Out of all the women, she's probably the most popular. Yeah. And she goes by the name the man. She just had a baby. She comes back. She writes to she, she she's all over the place now because she has a book coming out. And it's funny, her book is coming out at the same time as Ronda Rousey's. Yeah, and but I think the publishers know that this is a hot time. This is the time to do it, right? You, yeah, you know they got that they've been sitting on the books and now they're releasing them. So you got right. Becky Lynch's and Becky Lynch and and Ronda Rousey said the same things, James. They both complimented Triple H. And they both blasted Vince McMahon. Yeah. It's just, um, yeah. You know, that's interesting, though. What If it's, you know, if he's changed, if he's actually easier to work with. Or it may just be that, that you're seeing a little bit of structure at within uh tko or within wwe right now well tko probably came over and said to, the tko said to triple h listen we're not fucking around yeah that's what i'm i'll guarantee too. you that yeah i'm sure that uh i'm sure that they he sat down with dana white and dana white probably said this is how you run a company mm -hmm. here's dana white probably said here's the list here's here's how you run a damn company cut the crap yeah, I could see that. I could see Dana White doing something like that. Uh, not that Dana White, you know, Dana White is part of TKO. Oh, yeah. He yeah. has investments in it. He has the right to say something. Dana White has proved that he can run a company and make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, WWE, they're making money, then they're losing money, but they stay alive because of these huge contracts. Their TV contracts they yeah. get are phenomenal. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is that the, you know, they went through, you know, everything with COVID and all that in 2020. They got past it, and the TV contracts is what helped them. You know, I don't really usually read wrestling books, but I will read Ronda Rousey's. Yeah. Which, uh, and I will read Becky Did you get Becky your copy Lynch's. yet? I, Did I'm it waiting. come through the mail? No, I'm waiting. It should be here any day. Yeah. Uh, and people, when you go out and get the books, uh, Ronda Rousey has two books. One's for $35. That's without the that's without the signature autograph. And then uh, I think it's $75 for autograph books. I think Becky Lynch is doing the same thing. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, and with Becky Lynch, you get a nude. Oh, goodness. Okay. Do you really? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> 
comes with an Irish nude. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, James, I got a funny offer today. I'm going to share this with you people. This is funny shit. Real deal. Yeah. How's it going, my man? Hey, real deal. Now, that's not real deal from... Uh, that's this. That, this is a different real deal. Oh, it's a different real deal. Yes. Okay. God. <laughs> this real deal is from Boston. This ain't Tommy. We there's another. Real oh, deal I thought we were talking about Tommy real deal. I thought it was Tommy too. Right, Tommy? Is that you or is that the other? No, that's Tommy. I'm like a son of a bitch. Tommy, <laughs> there are two real deals now. Uh, just so you know, if you see another real deal come up there, he's a guy from uh, the Boston area. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Tommy. I didn't realize that. I didn't mean to phase you out like that oh i wanted to tell you the story yep this is a true story man i wanted to let you know this so this dentist mm -hmm. <laughs> this dentist gets a hold of me right and he says I, I tell you what man i thought he was joking but he wasn't he i said i said i'll tell you what i'll give you new teeth <laughs> <laughs> he said i'll give you new teeth he goes, I'll give you, uh, he goes, uh, I'll give you the implants. I'll do all the work on your mouth. Okay. And he, he goes, all you got to do is smile on your show. And you got to ask James on the mob channel to talk about us every show. Really? <laughs> That's what he said. Every show. And I'm like, what do you think, James? Does that sound like? Well, I mean, if they're going to give you a, a whole a whole new grill, no, but not but not the cheap, not not just the false ones. I'm talking the no, the, I know, yeah, that, that's that's thirty or forty thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> so and he said, "All we got to do." So, so the guy like literally made an offer. So I told him to write the offer back, and uh, I'm not going to say where he's located. But if I have to go there and for three four days to get this shit done, I'm going. Because well, you know, I have a couple of teeth I need done too. So if he'll do mine too, I don't need a whole like, grill. People but... like, oh, Lee, you're missing teeth. I'm 63 years old. Yeah, you, you know, know, I didn't I have had... a cavity until I was 40 something. I never yeah. had a cavity, and then it's like everything breaks down once you turn 50. You know, <laughs> Lee Cole's gay neighbor said, "I hope it's not John Wolf's dentist." <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So, guys, what do you think? You think I should take that offer? Because I'd be here with my, my new choppers. I'd be smiling away. You couldn't get my mouth shut. You know, uh, who had the biggest choppers? It's, um, what's his name? Uh, Cthulhu. His oh, son. Yeah. You ever see yeah, his choppers? he's got nice teeth. He has. He smiles, and he'll blind you with that teeth. With the mm -hmm. tooth, it will blind you. Yeah. With the tooth. Okay, no. <laughs> he has teeth, not a tooth. Oh, he's got, he's got nice teeth. <laughs> He has, but he has a nice set. I'm, I'm gonna, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna, I, I would get a picture of Bill Cattulo smiling and take it to the dentist and say, "I want those teeth right there." Yeah, that's what you. Yeah, we could Photoshop it, put Bill Cattulo's <laughs> teeth in your mouth. Okay. No, I mean that's a hell of a deal, though. I mean that's, I, you know, seriously, that's like thirty or forty thousand. If it's just don't do it like. Um, Kanye, you know, he's got the titanium grill. Did you know? Oh, about yeah. That? Okay. I'm going to come on here with a titanium grill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Allen Boxing, how you doing tonight, my man? So we have five pro, uh, we have pro, five pro athletes in our family, mostly major league baseball players and a couple of NFL players. We always knew from over 50 years ago that wrestling was full of many bad people. And you know something? I'm going to tell you something, people. I'm on covering stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know this, James. We can't talk about what it is. Right. Okay. But I'm on covering stuff about Mel Phillips, about uh, Terry Garvin. Mm -hmm. These guys were really bad guys, James. Yeah. And, you know, you have people that will defend them, but they were really bad guys. Yeah. And we He's, have true evidence, too. Yes. We, just can't, we can't show it. I saw the evidence. Yeah, there's true evidence, everyone, and it's disgusting. And, 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 and it's saying. more and more people coming out. These men were depraved animals. You know, and, and how long, you know, it's been a lot of these kids, they were kids, They've had to deal with this 
shame, that self shame for they destroyed years. lives. They destroyed yes. some of these kids' lives. They've yep. taken away from them. And you know what? I'm sure a couple of you guys are in the chat right now. Um, but we have discussed this and the things that people, you know, people laugh about this. They think this is some kind of joke. This is so much bigger than you think, people. Yeah. I mean, what I saw today, it's just. And when I'm going to tell you guys something right now. If you guys out there that are all defending Mel and those. You're, you're, you're playing a really bad game because you're going to look very foolish in the end it here. And I'm not will. just saying that, James. You know they're going to look foolish. I know. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it, too. I mean, there's uh, but there's a lot of people that trust you, Lee, that's... Um, but it's just people will look foolish once this comes out, you know. And, and I think people need to be a little careful putting a defense around Mel Phillips or... Terry Garvin, our, yes. you know, no, right now we'll stay, we're going to stick with Mel Phillips and uh, Terry Garvin. Uh, Pat Patterson is a whole different thing. Those two guys, yeah, because it's two levels of uh, predatorial behavior. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. One's toward children, the other one's uh, sexual harassment in the workplace. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, that's true. Uh, at least an adult may feel pressured, but they do, it's not like when you got to, when you're dealing with, 13 14 year old boys yeah that's you know and and i feel you know and i feel angry because i realize when i see i understand more now that what my brother went through than ever and i feel angry about it because this animal what he was doing how he would control those boys yeah. And the things that he would do. He had this, he had this like control over them that you wouldn't believe. He, yeah. It, it was like, uh, they would, they would look at him. They would love him like a father. Mm -hmm. And then he, you would know what? he would get mad. He would, he, he, he would go to a different area, his thoughts and stuff. Mm -hmm. He, it was his, the way he controlled these kids. It was, it, it would put uh, Jerry Sandusky, uh, mm. that level, you know, and, uh, yeah. I talk to people that will defend the, they have no idea what we're looking at right here. And that's, Do the they realize, thing, so when you start off as a ring boy, so you're 13 or 14 years old, you had Mel Phillips as a, as a predator. So you had to deal with that until you're about 17. Once you're 17, Mel Phillips won't bother you anymore. But no. at that point, then you've got Terry Garvin. Yep. Well, and, but you only a select, Patterson at eight. But you only a select a select few would go to Terry Garvin, right? A but then you'd have few. Pat Patterson at eighteen once they're well. Adults. Well, Pat Patterson is the people working in the in the in the business. But right now, so you, you couldn't know, get away with it. That's the thing: is no. you're fourteen years old. You you think once you're seventeen, and you don't you're not getting the attention that needed from um, from Mel Phillips, but then you're going to get it from another one. No, and people, this is no joke. I mean, this no. is this is this is some serious serious stuff. And um, there's true evidence that's and, going to be out. And I'll say this one time more one more time to you people that are attacking me and saying that you're gonna feel sorry for what you're you're not gonna feel you're gonna feel stupid. Yeah, you're gonna feel stupid. There's no turning back here. None. Well, and that's why they won't these ring boys, they will not go on some of those shows like No, because you have these animals out here that will go after them and call them liars and attack exactly. them. Exactly. But that's how but how many women have went through that too? That yes. Have been, that have been R and all that and then they're they're called the worst names, they're called liars and everything. That's what happens to these victims, these ring boys that if they go on certain shows they're they're called liars they might even have a great show but then the next show when they're not on it then they're going to be so oh, well, we don't know if that's true we don't believe it or whatever yes and and you know well, we see this stuff going on with p diddy we see this stuff going on with mm -hmm. these guys it's a sick world we live in but this to think that this corporation for 40 damn years 
40 years they did this. Yep. They abused women. They abused children. They abused their workers. Yeah. I mean, what this company did to people. You know, and that's what's uh, a little bit unique about this is it wasn't, you know, you, there's certain companies that women have been harassed and, and, and the men have been protected. But in this case, it's women and kids and everything if you have a hole if you have a hole in you you're going to have some kind of pervert looking for it that's i hate to be that blind but that's what you you, that's that's what this is when you have the big honcho up there shitting on people's heads Mm. you can't get much worse than that it's and it, it so the big boss is doing it so why not everybody else the big boss always knew this stuff was going on for years yeah for years this has not been going on. This has been going everything that you think Ashley Massaro, what happened to her, uh, the ring boys, what happened to them, uh, or, or these poor, the, these divas that were forced uh, by the by uh, Larry, Larry Nottis, whatever the fuck his name yeah, is. Yeah, John Larinatis, Yeah. Yeah. So it's always been going on, people. Mm-hmm. There's no denying it no more. Do you think that the guy that there's a, a guy that um, was a ring boy that's been defending Mel Phillips? Do you think he's got stock? No, I don't want to talk about. No, I don't want. I don't want to talk about him right now. Let's leave him out of the comment. I'm just saying. No, I, no, I, no, no. I don't want to talk about him no more. Uh, yeah. I just want to leave him out of it right now. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that, but it's uh, uh, everybody has their reasons why they're where they are. Yeah, and, okay. and it's not okay. about him. No, I don't but, don't even mention yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, everybody, a victim is a victim, but sometimes a victim's a worse victim, or sometimes a person's a victim and they don't even realize they're. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Right. That's what I was getting at. And uh, uh, all these people I've dealt with that have had these situations, they're all very nice guys. Yeah. But some of them have never recovered, people. No, never recovered. And that's the shame part. Yeah. And then you got these ruthless dirt sheet, uh, wrestling dirt sheet people are these uh, wrestling reporters yeah. that are doing things behind the scenes. They're trying to be everybody's friend. Yeah, that's the worst thing you can do. And we knew that from the mob genre, too. You can't. You can't be that way. You have to be objective, and and they're not reporters that do that. Yeah, but they're you know why? In the mob, boys. John. In the mob, though, they just killed you. Here, they don't kill you. They they they, they molest right. you and ruin your life. Yeah, they ruin right. your life. Look at Which look what Ashley worse. Massaro went through. That's a perfect oh example. That yeah. poor thing, you know. No matter, and then you'll have people say, "Well, she knew what she was getting into." No. Oh, you she think posted, she would have she posted, taken that yeah. plane, went to the Middle East if she knew that was going to happen? Uh, or I yeah, mean, or, or or they'll say, "Oh, she posed for Playboy." God bless her; she has the right God to do what she her. wants. That's yeah, her that body. That's just like that's kind of the slut shaming that we get people that oh, because a certain person is has a certain lifestyle, then oh, they get they get R or whatever. Then uh, well, they deserved it because of what the no. Ashley Massaro didn't deserve it. It doesn't matter if she was in Playboy. Yeah. Because she's in Playboy, because she decided that's what she wanted to do. She deserved right. to have animals do stuff to her. Right. Exactly. Okay. How about these little boys, these 13, 14 year old boys? They were some of these boys were wild kids. Of course. They deserved to happen with them because uh, uh Mel Phillips, the ultimate predator of all time. That's what he was. He was a predator. And the more you know why I, they did it, because uh, most of them had broken homes, so the parents weren't going to ever do anything, or that was the thought of someone that was doing this, that, well, you know, we're there, and may they even justified saying, oh, well, we're, we're giving this, this poor kid a way to maybe make a living or whatever, but, you know, there's no excuse for it. I mean, it's... It's victim. It's they're taking advantage of. And you know what people. bothers me more uh, about this whole thing too? What's that? A lot of these wrestlers seen what was going on, and I'm talking about people, the bigwigs. I'm talking about yeah. the the Hogans and the uh, 
uh, and the Venturas Plains, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they knew. They know. They know. They knew what was going on. Jesse Ventura told my brother, "Be careful around here. Mm -hmm. Bad things happen." Yeah. Okay. Jesse Ventura did that, and and Bruno did that. They they used to. And 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 you know the things. More things I find out, the more creepy this gets. This is like. You can't make this stuff up, people. You're going to be shocked when when this comes out. You're going to be, mm -hmm. you know, I can't. I, I, as what I'm saying right now is as far as I'm allowed to go. What do you think happened? Where, you know, all this happened. Um, you know, with your brother and all that, but the other victims, I guess they never really, this was a different world. You didn't have social media. You didn't have a way to connect with the other victims, I guess, you know, maybe no, that's, no. that's what And, and the was. problem are the guys from the dirt sheets, the guys from the dirt sheets, uh, mm -hmm. because they always treated this like a wrestling story. Ooh, a wrestling story. Oh, mm. mommy, it's a wrestling story. It wasn't a wrestling no. story. No. It was a story. Well, right. It was much, it went beyond wrestling. Right. You know, and people might get pissed about what I'm saying. I'm pissing on your wrestling, but let, I love wrestling. I love the entertainment, but the animal part, I don't love. I mean, right. we're not talking about grown men being abused here. Right. If this was in 2017 or whenever, when with Penn everybody State, be in jail, with Sandusky, yeah, because because the thing is with Sandusky and all that, that got out. People went to jail. And unfortunately, you know, this happened in an age when it wasn't taken seriously, you know, as it is. Now. Okay, I'm going to try to change, get away from this a little bit, but I'm sorry yep. I put this out there. I have to talk about it, people, because you don't know easy when this stuff keeps falling on my lap. It's like it gets right. kind of depressing. It really yeah. does get kind of depressing. Don't get me wrong, people, the people that are, you, that are trusting us. I appreciate it. And I'll always be here for you. And your story will always stay safe with me and will not get out until it's meant to get out. Right. It's always up to the victim what they want to do. Right. And uh, people just remember, we had these beautiful little boys that went to these wrestling arenas and trusted. Uh, they, they wanted to be around these wrestlers and we had a sure. guy there using it as the carrot. Right. You know, oh, I'll let you meet this wrestler. I'll let you meet mm -hmm. this wrestler. And he was like, he was setting his web and he always knew what he was doing. Yeah. Always. Mm. Okay. Let's read it. But okay, we'll get away from uh, you sick bastard. Uh, Mel, just burning your grave, you bastard. But anyway, or whatever happened to you, you evil dog. Hello, Lee and James. Uh, Proctor, you brought the devil is entertaining, and I love talking to you guys. Thank you, Ralph Rado. We we yeah, appreciate that. You. That means a lot. And if anybody wants to donate to the show, they're more than free. If they don't, oh, well, we don't care. Mm -hmm. Okay. You saw all I had to see in on the commercial. of uh, Yeah, you know something? Someone said to me, uh, Iron Claw, uh, someone was saying, how did he get so big? The doctors know how to give you these steroids now. And they build you up and then you lift weights. They yep. do it the right way. They back in the day in the eighties and stuff. And when, when Oakland Raiders had the whole line taken, uh, taken roids, mm -hmm. they didn't take them the right way. They just shoved no. them in their body. They knew nothing about it. And they died from it. I mean, Matuzak, Matuzak dropped dead. Uh, Alzado yep. died of cancer because mm -hmm. they, they, they were just throwing it in their body. Or look how many wrestlers Davy boy, yeah. Look at what happened to well, him. it's very scientific now. I mean, yes. everything, it's chemistry. It's, it's, they, they know exactly you you get your blood test, um, every week, you, you know, everything, all of your levels, your T levels, all of your levels are being, uh, checked now. And so the way they do it now, uh, it's, it's pretty, um, you know, at least short term, it's safe, you know, long term, it still may, you know, create problems. Okay, let's read, get, catch up on some of these. Gino, he won't go out until he's deceased. You'll have to kill him. <laughs> it's all the power. There is so separation between Vince, uh, Mr. McMahon, the character. Hey, Gino, you said that very well. A matter of fact, you know, let me see something here. Okay. 
I'm trying to find you up here, Gino. Gino, write something. So I don't know if you have a wrench, so I can give you a wrench. Okay. The, well, the way you said that, Gino, was perfect. You know, he it he became Vince McMahon even at home. He probably walked around with a mic in his hand, screaming and stuff. Can you imagine? Yeah. What Triple H did to China? Another sin. Yeah, it's a sin, but not just Triple H. It was Stephanie too. Yeah, and it both was, of them. You can't it was separate the, Stephanie from that. Yeah, it was the company because she was at the top of her game at that time, and they still let her go because Stephanie was like, Daddy, I don't want him around. Oh, okay. What they should have done is tell Stephanie to go outside with China and have a fist fight over her. Oh, that wouldn't have worked <laughs> well for <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> James, what's up, buddy? Love you and Lee. Hey help each other on lives yes we do hey yeah. we're friends people yes. we're real friends yeah you know we're not fake friends mm -hmm. you have a lot of fake friends in here james and i are good friends and we're here to help each other that's just the way yeah. we do it yep years of exposure god has a beautiful yeah you know something gino the shame part is that these bastards that did this stuff are dead mm-hmm you know, Mel Phillips never had a girlfriend. No, he didn't like women. It, 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 he didn't like girls. He didn't like men. He liked boys. Yeah. This guy won his whole life without a girlfriend. He wasn't a bad looking guy. No. Lee, have you ever heard of George Hackenschmidt? When wrestling was real, he and his he was the universal heavyweight champion for real. You, well, you know, wrestling was quite real up until the 40s and 50s until people yeah. started getting hurt real bad. Yeah. And you know what's funny about that though? Down yeah. down where down that what happened though is when they started uh, taking the realness out of wrestle, more people got hurt when it was fake mm -hmm. than when it was real. Yeah, I mean, it became almost like a, almost a sideshow for a while, but then, you know, it's become this billion dollar industry. And talking about sideshows, Mick Foley, there's a sideshow. <laughs> Mick Foley in his podcast said that he wished Vince McMahon wasn't allowed to come back. People, have you ever said to yourself, how is it that Mick Foley is still alive? Oh my gosh. There's nobody that did greater stunts, maybe Sabu, than he did. And you know he didn't have Sabu's body. He no. he had no muscles. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a guy that was like uh, just smoked a joint and went outside and hung out and, and he was hanging out with the with the hippies. <laughs> and he came yeah. inside and he would go up on the top. I mean, the fact that he is that Mick Foley is still alive is incredible. Some of the stuff he did and. And I mean, he really, he hurt himself though. I mean, that stuff was a lot of that stuff. He got hurt pretty bad, got burned, all that stuff. And but it was ingenious, the three personalities, all that stuff. I mean, that was entertainment. If anybody wants to jump up, there is the, uh, there is the link. Uh, yeah, it is. It, it's very entertaining. Uh, he had those three characters and, you know, uh, I, I put up a poll and you know who won. It was Cactus Jack. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people liked, uh, like the, uh, what was that figure, love guy or the love dude or something? Yeah, yeah, dude, the love dude, whatever. Yeah, dude, love. Yeah. Okay. Diddy is the Pat Patterson. You know something? I was talking. I think it was you yesterday. With all the money Diddy has, mm -hmm. I, you know, you understand what the hell. You have those, he has so much money, he doesn't know what to do with it. I mean, you got to remember, Diddy to, is still making money off of uh, Justin Bieber. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't understand, but you know, it, we know about R. Kelly, R. Kelly did it, but it seemed like R. Kelly, like 13 and 14 year old. Yeah, but, but, and you're right, R. Kelly, but R. Kelly is like one tenth the size of P. Diddy. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, he you did know, it in the '90s and early 2000s. And, but now, though, with the singers of, that he owns, his mm -hmm. his stable now, uh, everybody wants to come to him, and 
and he used this to his advantage. You know, it's but my understanding is he's a, not easy to work with either. No one really liked working with him, but he could get people money, get people fame. But the exploitation yes. of women that he's done, it's just horrible. Have to wonder why in hell is thinking of growing his mustache, especially with yeah. Chris. I'll tell you what, man, when he came back with that, <laughs> one guy writes me and goes, he said, that's not really Vince McMahon. That's someone pretending to be Vince McMahon. <laughs> some people are really into the conspiracy stuff. I'll tell you, you got to see some of the conspiracies that, that I, that I hear. And listen, sometimes those conspiracies are true, but yeah. someone said that that's not the real Vince McMahon, that they probably killed him or he's in a hole somewhere saying, let me out, let me out. <laughs> Now, if he if he was dead, it'd be like weekend at Bernie's. They'd be uh, Hank having him go out. You know, they'd be carrying him everywhere. So, uh, Lee, do you remember that interview with Vince when he took the paper off the interviewer's hand and tore it up to his face? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Vince McMahon. When you got him mad during an interview, he was very entertaining. Yeah. Okay, Sean Carter. Sean, how you doing tonight, my man? Look what they did to Sting. Yep. Booker T uh, versus Benoit for WCW TV belt. They were great matches. Yes, they were, but they took a lot out of both of them. Yeah, they did. I mean, they beat the daylights out of each other. Mm -hmm. Downwick. Yeah, that's the third comment I read of you. Dude, it's not that I don't read your comments. It's just that it's, sometimes it takes me a little while to get to your comments. I seen you up there before. A matter of fact, I said, oh, does he have a wrench? And uh, um, I see you up there now. And now you do have a wrench, my man. Yeah, That's where, that's the thing about it. They talk about wrestling is fake and stuff, but they, they, you know, look at that match. You know, they were. Oh my gosh. You know, they do hit each other. They do hurt each other. You know, some of the matches obviously fake. The fakest you know, thing they, about the fakest thing about wrestling is they know what the ending is going to be. Yeah, exactly. They know the end. They know who's going to win the match, but everything in between, you know, they might talk in a ring and give each other, yeah. uh, uh tell them what words. to do. But yeah. all you can do is miss. You got to mess up one pile driver. Oh, I mean, you that, have broken neck. And and we've seen that. Uh, Steve Austin uh, with Owen Hart. Owen Hart broke the guy's neck, and the guy was never the same again. And uh, uh, and he was told Owen Hart was told not to do it. That he that the guy really? was was scared. He didn't want to get it done. Yeah. Owen Hart still did it and uh, broke the guy's neck. Hmm. The guy was never the same after that. Ronnie Rousey is exposing uh, Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, Bruce Pritchard, culture of abuse in her books. People are defending Vince McMahon, which is conflicting. Yes. But you're going to have these people. They live in fantasy worlds. They think, oh, Vince is such. We know that Vince is a is an entertainment genius. Mm -hmm. No one ever said otherwise. There's a lot of geniuses out there that also try to take over the world and kill the million people. Yeah. Well, and that's the hope that I that we have on this is that you're going to get um, the the people that were also, you know, I understand getting Vince, but also the people beneath him that were. Uh, working for him that were also part of the problem they need to face the punishment too you know and we're going to have at least one or two if this goes criminally we're going to have one or two informants you know we're going to have someone you go to cooperate you i guarantee you that you have informants already working with the feds i'll bet I you can see john laurinaitis being in yes and we know this about when we see the mob the, mm -hmm. right now all they have to do is threaten you with the irs yeah. That's it. You see, the thing is, if it goes criminal, the one person they want, they, they want Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon will be the target. Just like when John Gotti uh, was a target, John Gotti Jr., you get that one person. And if they can, if John Laurinaitis can become an informant, John Laurinaitis give him does a kind of remind me of John A. Light. He does. That's the thing. I could see him <laughs> being an informant. Yes, I could definitely see that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, down next says, feel better, Tommy. I hope you're feeling good, Tommy. Yep. 
Yes, her book is thirty-five dollars, but but you can get the version where she signs it, and she probably has a stamp that she doesn't even sign it. She just stamps <laughs> the books and pretends she's signing them. Yeah. In an interview with Goldust, when he played, he had the turn infliction from the electrocution. Yeah, it, you know something. I put up a short. Bruno San Martino hated Dusty Rhodes. And uh, mm -hmm. Bruno said that Dusty couldn't sell out, a, um, couldn't sell anything out on the East Coast. There was a, a jealousy between those two. Yeah. And because they were two legends. And isn't mm -hmm. it funny how two legends like that would be so jealous of one another? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just their competitive nature. They just want to. Uh... You know, that's. I think it's more of that than anything. And, and they're yeah, and they're both dead, but they're legends. And and they are. And, and, I mean, when you think about like the top twenty-five greatest wrestlers ever, Bruno, and mm -hmm. if you take the top twenty-five, maybe we'll do a show like that sometime. Bruno's yep. going to be one of them, and Dusty Rhodes is going to be one of them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that that's who knows the reason, but. Uh, you know, you get, I think it's a competitive nature. You know, they want to be able to say, well, I was, I was better than this one. And, and there are some, there are regional, especially back then you had the regional, um, those yeah. regional uh, influences or people it, that were more popular in different well, areas. I, it was kind of, Bruno could say some funny stuff. And he said, uh, yeah. I put a short up on this. He says, Bruno says that uh, Dusty was as stupid as he was fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bruno's one that he he was unfiltered, you know. He would say whatever was on his mind. Yeah, yeah, and and he always he always was, but the fact of the matter is, yeah. Good stock came from Dusty Rhodes. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, look he yeah, look at the, you can tell what Dusty Rhodes has good stock. I mean, right now he has a star in the and same with Ric Flair. His daughter is off yeah. the charts. Uh, the grandson is off the charts for, or is it son of the grandson? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think grandson. Goldust interview on Howard Stern. I said, everybody on YouTube, you have a time so funny. I can imagine, Chris, that probably was. Yeah. And that's when, that's when Howard Stern's used to be funny. He stopped yeah. being funny years ago. Uh, but there was a time where he was the funniest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lee called baseball season. Tomorrow's baseball season, people. Yes, it is. I mean, that's what it's all about. I'm telling you, I'm my favorite sport. I'm a baseball guy. Baseball behind me, Yankee hat on. I'm ready for a season. Yeah. And when I say baseball's life, I. It's my favorite sport. It's always my favorite sport. To me, there's nothing harder to do in any sport than to hit a 102-mile-an-hour fastball. Right. I agree. Stand in the plate and have someone throw to a 100-mile fastball to you. Or better yet, have them throw a 92-mile-an-hour curveball. Well, that's, that's harder. I remember when I was in, uh, a freshman in high school, I got off to this great start. I was batting like 500. And then there was this kid named Rene Delavar. He was a senior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he came from another school. He wound up blowing out his arm, but he went into the Milwaukee Brewers system. And I remember I, I'm a lefty. I got up and he was a lefty. But I remember I got up uh, to hit against him. He threw three pitches to me, James. Mm -hmm. All three pitches I thought were going to hit me and I drove on the ground and all three were strikes. Oh, goodness. Uh, when you got a lefty, he's like a six, four lefty throwing a curveball to you. It looks like it's going to hit you. Well, it does as a left handed batter. And then it goes right down the middle of the plate. Yep. Yep, a good left-handed pitcher is, you've got a good future. Chris, yes, uh, I believe that Chicali's got some good choppers too. Uh, matter of fact, Renee has good choppers. Uh, Renee's, uh, all of Renee's teeth are fake, right, Renee? <laughs> I would really like for you to answer. Why do you keep saying out that neck? I keep, I, I, that's your fifth. I put up four or five of these now. Okay. Just put your answer down there. You're asking too many questions. You're giving me a headache now. Carlos, it's good to see you here tonight. How you doing, my man? Carlos, one of the good guys in the, in the genre. 
Yeah. Well, in the mob genre. Now he's in the wrestling genre. But good to see you here, Carlos. Unique mass of Lee Cole. Would you consider Jimmy Calandra the Brooklyn Brawler? You know, that would actually be a the Brooklyn Brawler. If Jimmy Calandra was a wrestler, would be that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. You ever see the Brooklyn Brawler with the torn up shirt and stuff? Yeah. Jimmy could be the Brooklyn Brawler part two. Yeah. That's funny. And the Brooklyn Brawler never won a match. He was the ultimate. Oh. He he was the ultimate. Uh, I I wanted to see a death match between the Brooklyn Brawler and Johnny Rods. What do you think, guys? <laughs> Who would win a match between oh, the God. Brooklyn Brawler and Johnny Rods? Wow. Two guys that never won a match. Never won. <laughs> yep. That's too funny. And every night, the Brooklyn Brawler got in the car and drove home or drove back where with Pat Patterson. <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, I just heard that story. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. I used to love watching uh, Gene interview Hulk Hogan. Yes, the good old days. What a great interview. You know, you don't see that anymore. You know, it's remember Lord Alfred Hayes? He was he was pretty good too. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, you don't. It's now everything is uh, different. It's like they wanted to match. Uh, I better not say that. I'll get a threatening letter. Listen, somebody wrote me a letter saying that they said that I'm a big Trump guy. And I don't mm -hmm. come on here talking about, I don't come on here talking about politics. Nobody knows yeah. what I am. In the mob genre, they know what I am. So, but this guy writes me a letter and says, how dare you be a Trump, a Trump supporter? He goes, I went to Reddit and I put your name out there on all the Reddit all the Reddit lists, on all the liberal Reddit lists. You're, you're one of our enemies now. This is Texas. You can bring, I'll tell you what, you could bring your Antifa group up here anytime you want because <laughs> they ain't yeah. going to be leaving. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's interesting, though, uh, the mob genre is mostly conservative, Republican like. And then I think in this, in the wrestling genre, it's a little bit more um, even, isn't it? Why don't you guys get a set of nuts and dra grab that uh, link? I see like pe regular people here. Gunsmoke, I see you here. I see some regulars. Grab the damn link already. <laughs> God almighty. I got to grab the link for your shows. Mm -hmm. You don't have to show your face. We know that you gained some weight to Gunsmoke, that you're oh, a puffy. Listen, when you're a five foot two Korean and you weigh 300 pounds, <laughs> okay, I'm waiting, waiting for, for. I'm going to keep insulting you until you come up here, Gunsmoke. Okay, uh, based, uh, based Barris got a seduction. Rosie Rousey criticized WWE today after leaving on the bad terms, but she was all for it in 2015 when she was main event and at WrestleMania with Rock. She was an avid fan. Yeah, of course she was. But that's what happens in business. You got people that come to, the, like, say you're a Yankee. You come there and you have three great years. Mm -hmm. But then you start seeing how it really is. Right. They, you know, they, Ronda Rousey could leave because she's rich. She doesn't have yeah, to. Yeah, she doesn't need to be in there. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. She could go where she wants. Her brand is. And why did she set. leave the second time? She left the second time because of concussions. They were yeah. so bad that she was getting very sick, throwing up. Yeah, uh, and there's no need. Why does she need to even do it, you know? And she, she said she it. suffered 10 different concussions. After seeing Amanda, Amanda Nunez punch her like that and seeing uh, Holly Holmes punch her like that, I'm sure she had some concussions because those vicious, those knockouts were vicious. They were vicious. Lee, your brother's story is going to help bring down. Lee, you're doing your part. Thank you, Chris. And yes, yes, uh, my, I wish my brother was alive and could see what's happening now. He'd yeah. be very happy. Janelle Grant and the other woman were defending, seeking justice against WWE Vince McMahon will spend the rest of their life behind in a cell. I don't get that, Wilfredo. What, what is words, who would be... Yeah, I'm ours. hoping you. I'm hoping you meet Vince. <laughs> They're not gonna be. I just don't. You know, I don't think he'll ever. I don't think he'll ever see a day. There he's. Uh, it's again. 
How many times have you seen me pull up New York's remark? <laughs> have you read my remark yet? Come on, really, dude? Are you the new Corky here? <laughs> Do you think the Benoit incident? Oh, you know something, man. I'm not a conspiracy guy, but if you think about that Benoit murder and everything, a lot of weird stuff happened there. Yeah. First of all, one week before Nancy died, her best friend died. Hmm. Sherry. Yeah. One week apart. I didn't realize it was that close. And that year, a lot of people died. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of it was based on, it, it was a lot of steroid issues going on. And uh, the fact that that Chris Benoit was going, he took four tests that year at the wellness program, the, the wellness program, and he passed them all. That's a joke. He passed them all, even though uh, his uh, he was 10 times higher when he died. What do they call that? Yeah, Sa how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. Right. They, they caught it. They caught it in the autopsy but oh yeah we read the autopsy it was just i don't know how he could have lived without the his testosterone was 10 times higher than that of yep. a normal no 20 times higher than that of a normal person his was like almost 300 and regularly it's like 25 26 your testosterone should be around there so maybe 10 times yeah. but his is the it was off the charts which and your testosterone makes you jittery, jumpy, yeah, and acting crazy. Yeah. Okay, right. But what are you going to do about living on the many rest these wrestlers that die and you're not guilty until proven innocent? And by the way, Lee, especially your past 36 years ago for, I don't know what you're saying. Now say that in English, Ricardo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, write that a little bit better. Send it back to me, and I'll read it again. I'll make you. That, I'll make you that promise. Oh, are you saying that I was a bad guy for thirty six years? I was a criminal. Mm -hmm. I never said otherwise. I never came up here and tried to pretend that I'm something I'm not. But the one thing I'm not is a child molester. Nope. See, a lot of people in here are criminals. A lot of people on YouTube are criminals, or were. They had a past. Yeah. But if children's part of your past, so you yeah. can't compare it. So if you're trying you see, to make none me... of your stuff was violent, you know, none of your stuff was uh, DWIs. You never, ne never DWI, never drugs. I would never do this. My, no. my stuff was always monetary, stupid shit. Yeah, it was more white collar yeah. crimes. Think about this. Uh, what did John Larry's wife uh, get sick? with like 10 different things all at once. She knew her hubby was a perv in a sleaze bowl, and she just found out too late. I don't know much about that, Gino. Uh, I can't really answer to that. I don't want to say something about a man's wife, especially if something happened to her. Yeah. No, uh, but if you want to, if Gino, if you want to fill me in on that, uh, Gunsmoke says, God damn it, Lee, What's up with these commercials uh, playing during the show? I'm trying to watch the show over here. Those commercials are what pays us. See, I get commercials, Gunsmoke. I didn't know they came on during a live. Yeah, you, yeah. Well, see, Gunsmoke doesn't get commercials. Okay. Yeah. I pay the premium, so I don't ever get a commercials. But... Gunsmoke has to do this. Please, sir. Please throw me a quarter. Please, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay it's funny these guys also they what is the deal about buy me a cup of coffee that's another one i hear buy me why did you say that james now i got an urge for a cup of coffee <laughs> and why do you put up a picture of your wife because i have a camera for a minute are you are you losing energy is your phone dying already no no, it's just I need to. I'm trying to do a couple of things real fast. While and this is good. down neck, your question is a boring question. Settle down, dude. Nobody cares. <laughs> I don't even know what his question is. I've been reading everything. Does somebody know what down neck's question is? <laughs> China was su such a great talent, but the WWF and uh, Paul uh, caused her trauma that led to her death. She led to her own death. She was a very sad woman. Nobody told her to go make those porno movies and stuff. Yeah. Uh,
but she felt like that was the only way that she could survive. She had a lot of self-image issues, I think. Yeah, I remember yeah. right, you know. And but don't get me wrong, I'm not sticking up for nobody with they how they treated her. What they should have done is said, look, your relationship with him is over. Yeah. You could finish out your contract and move on. But they didn't do that. She went up nope. to the office and they said, We're letting you go. Right? They they got rid of her right there. Yeah. They My took her whole is life about the wellness program now that it's a little bit better now, but you know, obviously. Oh, it's going to be better now. Oh, without a doubt, it's much better now. Yeah. I'm thinking Triple H is getting a pass because he leaked some info to the Federals uh, on VKM. You know something? Move in silence. I was actually thinking that. that that's a very good point. Uh, you think Triple H could be the, be the mole then? Well, not – Triple H – there's a lot of anger there. I mean, the man came, uh, Vince came in and threw his daughter out the door. That's his yeah. wife. That's why it's hard for me to think that he still, that Vince is running things through him, you know, running I, the yeah, company. I'm kind of thinking that too. I mean, you know what it is? Sometimes people are made more, more invincible than what they really are. Yeah. You know, they're not as powerful as people are trying to make them to be. Yeah. Because uh, he's a 78-year-old man now, but he's a very rich 78-year-old man. He isn't, uh, you know, running out of cash anytime soon. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And he's going to have the yeah. best lawyers. And oh, yeah. As long as you got the best lawyers, you could fight the feds. Well, yeah, and that, that's what we see. I mean, in just about every criminal case, if you... That's, you know, most people that get convicted, they don't have a good lawyer. Not saying all the time, but if you don't have a good lawyer, you have no chance is what I'm trying to say. And he's going to get the best lawyer. Down neck, be good now. Chris, I don't ask your opinion. Show some respect. I didn't respect you. Disrespect you. Always one guy with the drum. <laughs> Down neck really wants attention. <laughs> okay. Chris and down neck are going back and forth. <laughs> oh, goodness. This isn't the mob genre. Okay. It gets better, people. You ready? I'm not. Chris, F you oh, in plain on. English, jerk off. <laughs> oh, no. Don't anybody block anybody, please. If they want to have an argument no. there, leave them alone. Okay. Chris, you got my attention. Chris Emmer, Effer. Okay. Oh, we got uh, we got Vince McMahon in here. Devil. <laughs> Down neck. Are you a Vince McMahon fan? You're not going to start sending him dirty texts, are you? <laughs> hey, listen, I I've known ten, Down neck now for three years. Uh, he 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 can be kind of uh, he can get kind of mad. It's sad that all these ba uh, big bad wrestlers and not one can stand up to these vic for these victims. You you know. You're right. They were afraid to lose their jobs. They would lose their jobs right on the spot if they stood up for the victims. Yeah. Hey, Lee, I love your background. Oh, you're talking about back gear or my real personal background? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, God Courageous One. You know, I'm going to be putting wrestling stuff back there pretty soon. Uh, but I got to order it. I'm, gonna try, I'm trying to figure out and if anybody wants to donate me a wrestling pitcher, let me know. Go to wrestling, uh, uh, go to my email, uh, wrestling with the devil at Gmail, and I'll give you my info. And if somebody wants to donate something behind me, like these pictures were donated to me, Al Capone was sent to me by my sister. The other ones were donated too. Uh, this mic was donated to me by a guy. Uh, Thin gray line. He sent me this about a year ago. It was his. He bought another one and he literally sent this to me in the mail. You got some good people. You have some really good people giving yeah. people. It's amazing. Jesse Ventura is living very comfortable private life with his fam uh with his family with wealth. He would not dare put himself into problems. Yeah, I agree with you. You know. Uh, the guy's had quite a life. Very smart man. Very smart man. There's no doubt about that. Um, look, 
he he became governor of this one term, but the fact is that he won. No one expected him to win that race when he won in Minnesota. WWE has always made uh, seeing the company as more important than the people that were mistreated behind the scenes. Yes, the company was more important. And it's not only the mistreatment of people behind the scenes, how they were mistreated. A lot of it was sexual. The worst type of mistreatment that it could be. Yeah. Uh, we want to. We want to say something to me, uh, me and my Stu Stru Pete, James. No, no. I'm so me and my Stru. Just hey, hope everything's doing well. Glad you're here. Okay, that's it. No more fighting there. Uh, please. Let's let's cut it out, guys. We've been doing shows. We haven't had any issues in, for the last three weeks. Nothing in here like this. So there's no reason for it. In Charlotte, North Carolina, in the late 70s, wrestlers would come into King's Box and Gym. I, I remember training and telling the fight, uh, wrestlers to stay away from us kids. The wrestlers were not trusted around kids. Joe Allen. But, you know, let's not blame the wrestlers. Uh, I can understand what you're saying, Joe Allen, but uh, in, in the case of uh, the WWE, it was the um, executives or the people yeah. working in the back with the ring crew. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious about what he's saying about in Charlotte with the actual wrestlers. I didn't know about that. Okay, let's see. Wrestlers are more or less carnival. Yes. Wrestling at one time really was a carnival show. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. I mean, you can't even describe it any other way. They went around to school, the schools. Before wrestling became big, they traveled in U-Hauls and stuff. Or they got themselves an old truck and they would move a ring. Uh, the territories. I mean, they barely made money in the territories. They never knew how many people were going to show up for a match. Yeah, the the promoters were the only ones that make money, are the ones that run the territories, and so many got screwed. And that's why you had people like Andre the Giant uh, that, you know, they would say, "Hey, you got to pay me up front or whatever." So same thing with, um, you know, Bruiser Brody. I mean, those folks um, knew how it was, and the territories were infamous for either not paying you or saying, "Well." We're sure we'll pay you next time. That type of stuff. It was is not a not easy. Can you imagine Andre and Bruiser Brody looking for you at the same time, <laughs> oh, and you God. own both money? Could you imagine that, man? You don't want to owe those two. Anybody. Can you imagine Bruiser Brody and Andre catching you and they're together? They would beat the. That you you wouldn't survive that. I would say to Andre, whatever you do, just don't sit on my face with your ass, please. Do anything else. Yeah. All right. Joe Allen, how you doing? Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Hey, how are you doing? Sure yeah, we hear you. Okay. I'm Well, I'm the guy that left the comment, and it goes back to the territories that I believe James mentioned. Got something in common with James. I'm married to a Latino as well. Okay. Uh, um, well, I got something I'm, not in common with you guys. I was divorced from two of them. Well, that's a commonality <laughs> I'll probably have before. We'll both probably have with you <laughs> eventually. I yeah. don't know. I'm kidding. And uh, Lee, I'm your age. I believe I'm a, just a, a hair older than you. But I do think that the territories... <clears throat> are not getting mentioned as much as maybe we should mention them. First, I want to say God bless you, Lee and James, for bringing all this stuff up and getting a lot of truth out there. This channel's getting more truth out there than anything I've been looking at. Uh, I come from a family. We have many pro athletes uh, in Charlotte. Uh, just a quick history here The mid-Atlantic wrestling was home based in Charlotte. That is right. what became WCW. You guys know all about wrestling, yes. but for other people, 
uh, that may not know. Um, so when I was younger, uh, we were warned as children. We would go to the Charlotte Coliseum. People up in the Greensboro area would go. I won't get into it, but we were uh, ended up moving to a, a, a mid-sized city called Burlington, North Carolina, years later. And all these guys, you guys would definitely know and your listeners would know, uh, spent time with a an old lady of all things. I can't Burlington, remember her Bur- name. Burlington, I know about. That's where JR Cigars is located. Yes, yes. We used to have, they used to have a big outlet center there uh, yeah. where that was. Can you guys hold on one second? I'd like to say one thing to for Gunsmoke and uh, Mustang Mike. Thanks for telling me about those commercials. I don't know why that's going on. What I'm going to do is yeah. I'm going to have to go set them because it shouldn't be doing that. Not during yeah. a live on a replay, yeah. it yeah. would. But I'll yeah, I got one of the commercials too earlier, but I just got one. And I've been listening for quite yeah, well, some Gunsmoke, years now. Gunsmoke, Gunsmoke likes to bitch a lot. You know, he's like, a, well, he's yeah, he's a you know, kind he's of kind of, of he's a kind of a, been getting some <laughs> weird stuff with notifications today too. YouTube may be a little bit uh, messed up today because we the notifications weren't going out and just some weird stuff. Yeah, and them chunk those those chunky Koreans they got they're very sensitive. Oh, there's so many sensitive people nowadays. For sure. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but, so, so you're saying with the territories? Uh, well, Lee, the uh, it, it they ended up moving the TV taping from Charlotte to Raleigh, and then it went from Raleigh to Atlanta and the TBS thing and all of that. But uh, prior uh, in the mid and late '70s, when we were born and raised in Charlotte. Uh, my cousins and I, we were into boxing and I'm still, I train my son to this day in boxing. Uh, but it's a little more extensive than, I, I just don't want it to be glossed over uh, what was going on with concerns to us kids in that particular area. Well, you, you, um, you know, you're and you're right about that, though, because the, the territories did have a lot of things going on, like you're saying. Well, um, and it all turned into two companies. Everything got drew from all those territories. Uh, uh, a lot of the people, uh, the the way they did things. I mean, a whole host of variables came from the territories. And ended with what we got now, which is basically just the WWE and, right. you know, some independent companies out there or whatnot. But when I was a kid, uh, and and when I say kid, I was a, a, a younger teenager. Uh, these guys, you would all know who they were. You, you would be shocked. Uh, I could go down a list of names if you guys would like. But no, I'm not on guys, here. No, but if you okay. could if you could send me an but, email with those names, I would love it. Yeah, if I can figure out how to, uh, I'll go to your home, the home page on here, and if you've got an email on yes. that, yes. you'll know. It's just everybody that was in the Mid Atlantic Wrestling in the night in the late seventies. Well, James, uh, James is but, James but is we, James, Yeah, go ahead. But, James is around the uh, D- Dallas stuff, and I'm sure that he, yeah. he would say the same thing. Those territories were very uh, uh, wild. I mean, these guys were wild guys, and some, yeah, a lot of them like had well, we, very, very bad criminal records. Ours were well, more for we, the teenage girls, were the ones you had to that were told to be careful because the the you know, especially 16, 17 year old girls, they were in love with these wrestlers talking about in dallas the you know and so yeah. with it's it was um you know so i don't know what, what type of uh behavior that they were warning you guys about in charlotte well but, you know, i just want to give curious. you a little story okay. here uh yeah a trainer who i will mention his name because he he's passed and he is a uh a hero of mine 
and from childhood. And so was the WBA heavyweight champion that he was training at the time. Came into Kings in Charlotte, and he saw these wrestlers coming in. Now, you have to understand that back then, there wasn't Gold's Gyms to go to, at least not down south. Maybe, maybe in Dallas or somewhere there were, but I'm talking many years ago. So these wrestlers didn't have you know, 30 options every city they came to to go work out or do their thing. So what did he say about However, these guys? Well, what happened was Ace Miller, uh, the guy who was training Big John Tate, he was, they were coming back and forth from Knoxville, Tennessee to Charlotte, North Carolina. And one day he come in there and he, he was a little man, but when he talked, everybody listened. He said right in front of everybody, you make sure that when kids are in this effing gym, that these MFers are not co-mingling with them alone. Separate them. These guys do not belong around kids. And that stuck with me all my life, all my life. Later on, I've got a boatload of stories that, I will maybe I'll get on and talk Lee at some other times about a lot of the wrestlers that I, I got to meet and co-mingle with and things of that nature later on as I was becoming an older teen and a, an adult. But I never had any problems with them, but they were very weary in Charlotte with Jim Crockett promotions with those wrestlers in the mid and late seventies and into the early eighties. Very awesome. worry about letting them around kids. Uh, well, you know, you go down to the Coliseum is one thing you get an autograph is one thing. Some of them used to come to our school. Uh, my, one of my substitute teacher was Baron Von Reisky's wife uh in the seventh and eighth grades for example so all those people were real close-knit in that area but we were warned it was uh like they were a bunch of prima donnas yep. for maybe a plethora of different reasons and let, and, and, and let me and let me ask james a question about that being that you're taught on this subject james yeah did these these wrestlers get a lot of these young girls pregnant did they get a lot of what of these young girls pregnant in, in Dallas? There are rumors of it. So that that was something that was always a, a concern because, um, you know, they go out with any. And, and so that was something, you know, as far as uh, kids go, the only thing that, you know, that I knew was because, you know, they, these guys would, you know, there's a lot of locker room talk that would go on and maybe that's why they didn't want you know kids around because of the behavior would see and maybe it's like that but it was always about you know finding women and girl you know teenage girls that type of stuff was more the the problem and as far as getting girls pregnant yeah i mean i've heard rumors of that happening and i'm sorry I and, and Lee, I just want to let you know before I get off, because I think you'll get a big kick out of this. My next door neighbor was someone you would probably know as Trader Jack McKinn, who uh, managed the San Diego Padres, the Cincinnati oh, Reds, yeah. and the yep. Florida Marlins. Yeah. Yep. He was excellent friends uh, with my uncle, William Edgar Bud Harden, who played for the Cubs, Padres, and Angels. And uh, I got repeated whippings from him when I was a kid, back when if you did something wrong at your friend's house, the neighbor's parent was allowed to beat the heck out of you. <laughs> and so I just wanted to share share that with you, that that uh, the little baseball story there. Yep, I appreciate it. So, and I just wanted to let you guys know that was an incident that stuck out in my mind in Charlotte. Uh, I'm sure if it would have been the 
minor league Charlotte Hornets baseball team, they probably would have said the same thing. I don't know about but, that. You got two different. We places. all thought it was very weird. Yeah. You know, okay, I'm going to catch so. up on some of these remarks here. Uh, Wilfredo says people believe uh, that it is an actor who looks like Vince McMahon of mustache, but no, it's an actor. Yeah, yeah. Wilfredo, a lot of people have been saying that, but Lee, I asked you a long time ago. You're still complaining. Oh my God, you need you need a hug. You need a hug. Okay, let me pull this one up. Rosalia. Hello. Hi, Lee. How you doing? Hey. I'm doing good. How so are what, you? What brings you up here today, Rosalia? Has everything came up to say hi? I just wanted to say thank you for your channel and thank you for defending all those people that are innocent and people that are not with us. And all the people that are getting support to your channel, I mean, it's really amazing. I uh, appreciate all the work that you do. Well, I appreciate that means a lot, especially uh, that, that that means a lot. And uh, and we do it with sincerity, you know, and, and that's the main thing, with sincerity and telling the truth. Thank you. Hopefully those, um, everybody gives justice more important and um at the end of the channel it's always hope yeah i mean that's true and you know i appreciate you coming on and you know sharing that with us and so yeah that's what you hope for is that justice will um prevail at the end And Nobody's unfortunately, perfect, but go ahead. Well, unfortunately, it's not going to be criminal justice with uh, the guys like Mel Phillips and stuff like that because they're dead. Uh, but yeah. you know, you know those those kids who are now men, grandfathers. Uh, the more of them that can come out, they understand that this wasn't just these guys. This was a company allowing this to happen. It was yeah. the bosses that were allowing this to happen. And that's what makes it really bad. Yes. Okay. It's so sad. I'm going to read a couple of these, Rosalie, real quick. Uh, everyone uh, make the Mount Rushmore up of, of wrestlers. Bruno and Dusty are right up there. Uh, they were so great back then. Yeah, they were great. And they were great with the mic and. And they were great wrestlers. Bruno was a strong guy. A guy used to bench press almost 600 pounds. Yeah, I mean, they were definitely athletes, you know. I mean, that's the thing is that, um, you know, some people don't, don't realize that. But those guys were definitely athletes back then. You know something? I noticed that Gunsmoke and his friends, the group of Gunsmoke's buddies that are coming over here, are getting commercials. Huh. I don't feel that bad now. Really? <laughs> you know, I thought, it, you know, if they're getting the commercials, it's okay. It works out. <laughs> Another fat, bold Italian. I hope you're getting them. Gunsmoke, I hope you're getting them. And, uh, uh, but I'm going to work on that. But th thanks for letting me know that, guys. Hey, guys, I'm going to let you down, Rosalia and Joe. Yeah. Okay, right. thank you, you so much. I appreciate thank you both. Thank you for thank everything you. you do, man. And God you bless you. both take care. Thank you so much. Thank You're welcome. You. God bless you. Bye-bye. You're welcome anytime. Bye. Right. Okay. I don't want to feel, uh, fall too far behind that. And there was some interference in one of their... Uh, yeah. Hey, William, how you doing tonight? What's up, Smoke? What do you mean up, Smoke? How about what's up, Lee? Okay, now if you are over in Smoke's channel, you could say what's up, Smoke. See that gun yeah. smoke? You come over here, you start all shit. You bring you you bring your little posse with you. Yeah. Gun smoke is a leak, uh, is a leak mean fighting machine. <laughs> okay. Gun smoke, if you can come up here and show me that you're a lean 
sleek, lean fighting machine. Oh, look at this. $4.99 from Gunsmoke. <laughs> Thank you, my man. I appreciate Thank that. You. That's very nice of you. Yep. Mean Gene Oakland. Remember Mean Gene Oakland? Yep. And Macho Man Randy Macho Savage. Macho Man, and... yep, Randy. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. When you think about Macho Man, he could really work a mic. Yes. I mean, he got into that. If you look at him and his brother, his brother could barely talk. Uh, Lanny Poffo could barely talk on a mic. And that's what stopped him from ever really uh, going anywhere. It's so important, yeah. you know, how to work a mic. Well, and that's what, that's what I think was missing for several years with WWE. So you didn't, to me, you didn't really have, have that. Um, you didn't have the wrestlers that had that ability, at, at least going back to, you know, looking at Macho Man, even like Hulk Hogan and, uh, you know, they could. The worst was Bob Backlund. Mic. Bob Backlund, great wrestler. Oh. He was horrible on the mic, Bob Backlund. Yeah. And the fact that he stayed champion, what, four, how many, Bob Backlund, I think was champion, what, three, four years? It was, it was a fact, while, you know. I, I don't understand it, but, you know, it was, that was always what I saw was different with the, you know, the older, you know, when you know, you would see the wrestlers, they, they knew how to come by. Hey guys, I'm going to put up a picture right now. And I want you guys to tell me what you think of this picture. Picture being at the beach and you run to a group of guys, right? And you, okay, say you're with about, say you're about six guys, right? And you're real tough guys and you want to go start a fight. And you run across these guys and they're making fun of you and stuff. I want you guys to tell me what you're going to do if you run into this group of guys right here. <laughs> well, I don't think I would say too much. You've got Stone Cold there with hair. You got Regal. Yep. You got Steamboat. Yep. Uh, you got Anderson, and uh, he he's choking out uh, Steiner. Now that yeah. those that that's five great wrestlers there. Five great wrestlers yeah. all hanging out Love together that on photo. the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. Tony B found me this and sent this to me. Uh, this is nice. It, wow. I mean, just look at. And someone said to me, "That can't be a photo. You guys, that has to be uh, one of those uh, AI ones, whatever they call them." Oh, Photoshop stuff. Yeah. Or no, it's not, yeah. people. That's a real photo. True. Yeah. Uh, well, Tony you, B uh, gets us some great stuff. He's one of the best researchers that I've ever known, and he will, you know, nothing's fake that comes from him. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin Sullivan. Right. I'm sorry. What would I say? What did I say, Steiner? Thank you, me. Thanks. Wow. I, I was way off on that one. <laughs> yeah. That, well, I meant to say Kevin Sullivan, but thank you. Uh, but, but that's some picture, ain't it? And uh, we we yeah. put these up on our community page, and I and and people have been sending me all sorts of pictures, amazing pictures, and uh, I just wanted you. to This is one of the best pictures I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah, that's and a good uh, picture. I've never seen it before. And uh, Jesse uh, Oval said a year nineteen ninety two, uh, the ninety three. Yep, that's when they were all together. But you look, you know, it's amazing when you look at that picture. Now, they played the enemies of each other in the ring and stuff. Do you think they had any idea that the one of them that was going to become most famous is the one that that time that was the least famous? You know, I, I'm sure that was a surprise. You're talking about uh, Steve Austin. Yes, yeah, Steve Austin, because, you know, it took him a little bit of time. He, he kind of wasn't a he was kind of a late late bloomer in a way you know when it comes to to that it took him a while but he was always an athlete you know i he was from texas went to university of north texas all that and played football but he was uh he, he was wooden initially you know no one thought that he could i remember he wasn't, him wrestling he, he was not good on the mic no i remember him uh name when he was um down in dallas before he uh, got big in you know the mid 90s he he's just very wooden he wasn't he didn't have any personality and and that changed you know i'm not sure how it changed but he he became uh very good behind a mic 
And these are all tough guys. But do you know who they say out of these tough guys was the toughest? Um, Macho Man? Regal. Macho Man's not in Rangers? here. Where do you see Macho? He's not in this picture, James. Who are, I'm trying to... A steamboat. Who were you saying? No, I said out of these guys, people don't oh, realize Regal, Regal was a very tough guy. Oh, you're coming out in the photo. Okay. Yeah, I mean Regal was a he was a badass. Yeah. Not many not many people picked fights with him, and he he was a shooter. That's right. He could take you down. It don't matter who you were. Yeah, you know, and and you know, you see this. You know, he plays this rich guy. He's a very smart guy. You know, uh, very. Yeah. He's became a very wealthy guy. And he really is wealthy, but he was a tough guy. Yeah. Yeah. Stone Cold Steve Austin was fired at WCW, but in WWE, he debuted in 1996 as ringmaster. He carried the company in the Attitude Hour. Yes. He just showed up one night and got a hold of that mic and all of a sudden became something that he never was. Go figure it out. He just took off. But I just wanted you guys to see that picture. It's a phenomenal picture. And if you go to the community page, I have hundreds of phenomenal wrestling pictures on it that people have sent, and and they're really good ones. I got I put up two pictures today of Macho Man with a surfboard on the beach. Yeah, you know, and and that was a really good picture. Okay, let's read some more of these. We didn't have a, we don't have a huge crowd tonight, but we've had a nice steady crowd tonight, which is nice. Okay, yeah. uh, another fat oh another fat ball Sicilian. This is what he takes. Sicilian takes steroids, drugs, alcohol, and he likes to be uh, yes. So uh, another fat ball Italian. You need to stop taking that stuff. It's going to kill you. What do you think? Should he stop taking that stuff, uh, James? Yeah, absolutely. Are you listening to me, James? Yeah, I'm listening to you. You're talking about <laughs> another fat, bald Italian. Taking yes, he's addicted steroids, to steroids, drugs, and alcohol. And drugs. Yeah. He needs to stop. I'm going to say this. Vince is behind a lot of things and events. Rofredo, people believe it was Kevin Sullivan who was accountable for the tragedy of Chris and the Benoit family in 2007, but CNN and Larry King did documentaries uh, about that crime. Yeah, and you know something? Uh, you hear that, but I don't think so. If somebody was responsible for that crime, I don't think he'd be. Can someone be? A lot of weird shit was going on with that crime. Yeah. A lot of weird stuff. Um, well, at the end, it's Chris. But murder is position. weird, though. But, Chris, but James, murder's weird, right? There's really no... There's no... When somebody starts killing, you know, and they go on a killing spree like that, it's weird. Well, it's not... No one in a normal state of mind can do that. You know, it's, it's obvious that you mentally, there was... He, he just stabbed, but, you know... I watched... James, no I watched... I watched his last interview before that murder. And he was yep. acting, he was, he was like far out. You could see it in, he, he wasn't the same Chris Benoit anymore. His brain was shot. Right. His body People were was saying shot. that, that we're talking to him the first, you know, like a few days before that, they just said he, he just wasn't, didn't sound right. He was just, uh, just totally very, uh, I guess the word is, uh, he was not spastic, but he was, on edge she was on edge is what it was just you know something wasn't right and you know you know somebody's writing in here too another big thing with these wrestlers they would steal each other's wives you always hear about that stuff our girlfriends yeah. mm -hmm. you know it was very common well and that was the that's where the most of the problems when there were fights between wrestlers real fights it was all, usually over a woman but you know that so Kevin Sullivan with uh, Benoit, and then you had and and you had uh, uh, um, Stone Cold with uh, McMichaels. Uh, yeah, you know it's you got to be crazy to. Uh, I guess Randy Macho Man had it right. Elizabeth, go get in that closet. Don't come out either. 
But you know, people were scared yeah. shit of of Macho Man. They wouldn't go near yeah, him. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. He's uh, no one wanted to mess with him. And yeah, and what did they say, James? They, they said they got to the point where one guy was talking. And he said that whenever he walked past, whenever he walked past Elizabeth, he looked down toward the ground and didn't look up at her. Right, because I mean, she, he accused every man of trying to sleep with her and they I mean, probably he was jealous um i like to offer the beautiful ladies 18 to 55 a contract the role involves a variety of positions in various offices with a high variety high rank in we officials that's from vince mcmahon jr hey vince how you doing so yeah. see that we got vince mcmahon in our chat yep all we need now is uh, Jerry McDivitt and Linda. Mm -hmm. Lee, you and James are the best. Love the Mob Channel. Loving this one too. Hey, uh, Rally, Rally, I appreciate that. Um, and we and we worked on this channel today, and James and I we worked on his channel today. So we've been busy all day. You know, this entertaining thing is not as easy as it looks. You know. It's not, you know, it's, uh, I got There's 98 a lot of time it goes into it, you know, like we have 98 people here. And now if this was gun smoke and he had 98 people, he'd be going, man, it's busy here. Wow. Look at all these people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm waiting for him to tell me to go F myself. <laughs> Mickey Griggs, uh, you think Stephanie would go along with this? I don't know, my man. Billionaires are funny people. And talking about a man with a lot of money, another fat, bald Italian got some money. Jesus, these commercials. Are so, he, he's still bitching about the commercials. You know what I yeah. did? I, wanna, I, I got a confession to make gun smoke. They got this little thing on the commercials, and I wrote gun smoke next to it. <laughs> so. So you, I said, and I told him every minute to give gun smoke a commercial. <laughs> yeah. I just think YouTube's kind of out of it. They, It's weird. You know, I agree with you. The rock is looking real old all of a sudden. I guess if you are in the gas for that long, you are absolutely right. He is looking old. He, all of a sudden he's aging. You know, you could fight that your whole life. You're like, he looked great. Then one, it takes a year for, for you just to, you get to a certain age. It doesn't take, and I know this because I'm older. Do you think the amount of Trump's judgment fine and the amount of stock Vince, uh, we talked about this. I did a show on this. Well, we'll see. Trump's getting them. I, I don't know what to think. I'll be honest with you. I, I thought I said something I, I predicted. Maybe a lot of people thought it was crazy. But hey, listen, that's the good thing about these shows. You could say stuff like that. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. WWE micromanaging promos words they can use. Vince didn't like the word hospital for some reason. <laughs> Did you hear about that, James? That he didn't like the word hospital? Yeah. I never heard that. Oh, would Vince leave Shane alone with Mel? That's a good question. When I was okay, question. when I was a trainer, I was told that not to be around certain people and cross of their in cross their paths. You get bad people and everything, unfortunately. You know, uh, you know, when I was a kid, um, I had a little bad reputation, and my best friend, his name was Billy. So for three years, his mother thought my name was Jerry Chambers. Because oh. uh yes, because his mother said to her, said to Billy, stay away from the coal boys. Because the coal boys were kind of bad. And yeah. uh, and so it's kind of funny because after three years, one day she finds out who I am. And we got along great after that. But just because of my reputation, my brother's reputation, and we were like 14 years old. 
I had to change my name with my best friend for three years. Yeah, Jerry Chambers. I always remember that name. Yeah. Come on. You got a bad reputation as a kid, too, didn't you, James? No. No? No, not really. But I, I had a friend that my parents didn't like. His name was Tim Whitley. And and so he would call, and, and his name was Mike Davis. And he'd, he'd, he would pretend like he was a black guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know why, but... And he, and my mom loved him because, you know, he was uh, always talking about uh, how much he wanted to invite everyone over for chitlins and all that. You know, I know it's not politically correct, but, you know, he, my mom did not like Tim Whitley. And so he had to change it, disguise his voice. Look at these two crybabies. Gun smoke, look. These commercials have no mercy. And here's Mustang Mike. GSD, I'm averaging a commercial a minute. Hey guys, really? Is any use average? Are, are they kind of exaggerating? Bruiser Brody was the king of the territory. Sad to say, he died a rich man from his enemy, Jose Gonzalez. He did. Yep. Lee is making a com a killing off these commercials. <laughs> hey J James, did you ever see a grown man bitch so much about commercials? I just, you know, for me, I, I do the uh, YouTube premium, so I don't get them. Yeah, are they, why don't you put, that's what it is, you're right, they don't do the premium, yeah. do they? No, but you know, I think there's, there must be a problem if they're really getting commercials. It's, no, I think, I think. Or maybe YouTube just wants, you know, it's YouTube makes most of the money off. Yeah, we don't make any money, I mean, we make a little, but, but I think, yeah. uh. I think that um, you're right, Gunsmoke, because your cheap ass doesn't want to get the premium. Uh, so this is what happens. You get commercials. See, most people here yeah. have the premium. Yeah. But I didn't realize this. And so that means also uh, we have a problem with uh, Mustang Mike. You guys got to get the premium. Gunsmoke, I'm a negative Nancy over here. Braves are going to have a good season. Uh, James, are the Braves going to have a good season? Yeah. They got a good I team. So. They, they got, got a good, a good team. team. I think they'll do well. Yep, and but I'm going to be going for the, my Yankees. Greatest World Series ever is uh, Atlanta was up two games to none, and game three yep. they were up six to three. And everybody thought that series was over, didn't they, James? Oh, Yeah. Yeah, that, that was, a, that was yeah. a good series. It wasn't it Laritz that hit the tying at home run? Yeah, the catcher, Jim Laritz. Yeah, yeah, tie. Jim Laritz. I think so. Yeah, and, he was and, the yeah. And one. then the Yankee and the Yankees swept them after that. And and which made it unbelievable though, because you had to beat Glavin, you had to beat Maddox and Smoltz. The greatest three of the greatest yeah, three whole thing is that the yeah, the greatest pitching trio ever in my opinion and three hall of famers they had three hall Larry's of famers was someone that was i liked him Jim Larry's, because he he was clutch i mean he wasn't he wasn't always he wasn't necessarily had the best average or anything but he was one of those guys you weren't in the locker room or in the clubhouse i mean what is this right here tony atlas midlife told a story of some wrestlers drugging and urinating on the chief's police daughter police chief of police and wrapping her in a rug and turning the heat in the motel room uh, is about the worst. Yeah, but it's coming from Tony Atlas. I didn't like Atlas either. I mean, but, but I'm talking about his stories. Tony Atlas, he could tell some stories. Yeah, exactly. He could tell some stories. Now, I'm not saying it's not true, but Tony does, does have a reputation of kind of exaggerating. Yeah, right. I know. That's the thing is because some of the stuff we were doing research on and we try to listen to Atlas because he, he had a, a totally different story, you know, on a couple of things. I mean, I like him. It's not, I don't like him. It's just, I don't believe everything he says. Mickey three in a row. I don't know what you're talking about, but I hope you get three in a row, my man. It's, oh, just, uh, Mickey says, is wanted to know if, uh, that guy was my illegitimate son. No, I don't. I have an illegitimate daughter. I don't have an illegitimate son. So get it right. <laughs> okay. 
Yes, Mustang, it is. Okay, uh, really believe back in the days I was, yes, it was. Back in the days, those people were much different than they are now. What do you think, James, to that question? What what was the question on here? I can't, I can't read it. Okay, so, was Kaf, Kafabi or really believed back in the days? Oh, was Kafabi believed in the, yeah. the days? No, I mean, I think most people knew it was wasn't real. You I mean, just didn't want you just didn't want to walk up to uh, that maniac that smacked uh, uh, Stossel. Oh yeah, yeah. That no, was I awesome. Mean, the, that was awesome. The thing is, those guys. The thing again, even though parts of that was fake, those weren't guys you wanted to mess with. They they could hold their own. They were definitely uh, brawlers. And but it's just yeah. I mean, I'm sure most people. Yeah, nobody messed with Terry and Tor Terry and Dory uh, Funk, did they? No, I mean. I know. Mustang Mike, you're a funny guy. I like to offer you a contract. <laughs> Vince McMahon needs to get out the hell. Vince, stop it. You're not getting a wrench, Vince. <laughs> I'm gonna sue you, Lee. Okay. <laughs> I'll take don't sue me, Gunsmoke. I'll tell you what. I will pay for your premium YouTube. How's that? I, I that's what do you think? Should we pay for gun smokes so he can get premium YouTube? Yeah, pretty soon he's gonna have the duck. Whenever you see, uh, whenever you see this, uh, up here with duck in the corner, just so you know, that means that they got the free version of oh, uh, stream yeah. of StreamYard. StreamYard, yeah, yes. So if they got the duck, that means that they can't pay the bills. And I'm not sure if Gunsmoke has the duck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fat Bald says, so, uh, Lee R. James, do you see wrestling going that, now that they are no longer under? I see wrestling doing better. They just signed a huge contract with Netflix. I think that yeah. they're going to figure it out. They're going to get it together. Uh, but It's because of TKO, and they've got the people that's behind it. They know how to... Uh, manage entertainment that that's the thing remember this is entertainment and and so they know how to do that so they and and, and and they're using the women more uh yeah it's a and the, the women wrestling has actually become better than the men's wrestling i agree definitely you know charlotte flair if charlotte flair has a match against uh the man i mean that's a that's that you know that's going to be a great match yep um some of these women are putting on great matches. Yeah. No, I mean, I think there's a future for it. I mean, they have to get past the scandal. And it's just the reason I believe that, one, they got the, like you said, the TV, con the contract with Netflix. So that's where the, as long as they get good contracts like that for on television, they're going to be fine. And then, two, uh, I believe in the leadership of, the company endeavor or whatever uh they're going to be able to see this through i mean there's some smart people in the room with that okay well listen um joe root says dusty Rhodes is like a tampax 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 he isn't number one but he's up there okay <laughs> Oh, here he is. Here he is. I love commercials. E. You should have used that four ninety nine and put it toward the premium. Yeah, Mean Gene was the best interviewer. Mean Gene Ogerlin. Yeah. Hey guys, if I get cut off, that happened last week. I don't think it's gonna. Ha I'm not sure what happened at the two hour mark. I was planning on staying a little bit longer. James, are you going to hang around a little bit longer? Or do you got to get to your, your woman? Yeah, I need to get going, though. I got a couple of things I need to do. Well, you could take off. I'll carry it from here. Okay. No, okay. I appreciate it. I appreciate Thanks, you everyone. being here. And yep, I'm going to read some of you. these remarks. Okay. Thanks, James. I'll make sure not to end the show. Okay. My fault last time. Did you? Oh, you ended the show last time then. 
I think I might have on accident. When oh, I, when I that's what leave. happened. You see that, people? Fault. He ended the show last time. Yeah, no, won't. he did but, that. He was jealous. He was jealous. He did that out no. of jealous rage. <laughs> yeah. No. no. I think I probably did. I wanted to leave, and I think he had me because I have yeah. don't, access, yeah. whatever you call it. So. People don't mess with those six dudes on the beach. It wouldn't that. end well for you. I agree with you. I'll just read these if you want to take off, right. James. Uh, thanks, everyone. Yep, okay. Everyone. And go over to and underneath here, James, if you have not subbed to the, uh, the mob channel of James, please go over there and sub to it. Take care, my man. Yeah, that was weird. Kevin Sullivan never went to the WWE. That was definitely where Polly, will you stop? Okay. Come here. Okay. For you people that don't know, this is Polly. This is my dog. She lives with me. This is my this is my this is my woman right here. Right there. Come here, Polly. Look at the camera. That's Polly. There she is. Okay. She doesn't like to be on TV. Okay. Iron Sheik was in his mid forties when he became popular and beat Backlund. Yes, he was in hell of a hell of a condition. Uh, the Iron Sheik, Lee, who was the greatest wrestler of all time in your opinion in all aspects? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know. It depends what your cup of tea is. I love Bruno San Martino. I don't think he's the greatest wrestler ever. You know, if you're going to talk about who, what wrestler was the biggest importance to wrestling, it would have to be Hulk Hogan. I mean, there was four or five years there where he was on, he was untouchable, but not the greatest wrestler in the ring by no means. Chris Moran started taking steroids at age 16. That influenced he his when when Chris Benoit his autopsy uh, and even before his he, they basically said he had ten months to live. He was a dying man. Benoit looked like a giant midget. That's what he looked like. West Sellers, I would keep my wife away from roided men. I would keep her away from these pathetic white male insulish uh, simps nowadays. Oh, God. Lee, I'm getting a real J.R. Uh, Jim Ross vibe. Okay, people, I'm going to call it quits tonight. I'd just like to thank everybody for being here tonight. It's been fun. Uh, and we'll be back maybe Sunday night. Yeah, we'll probably do something on Sunday night. So if you want to keep an eye out. And uh, like I said, there's going to be some good stuff coming up, people, about this whole thing with uh, Mel Phillips and all these perverts. Uh, really hard, solid evidence. Uh, it's not the, the talking's over with these guys, people. You know, there's lots of evidence on them now. Just so you do know. And it's going to be coming out. With that, I'd like to thank you all for being here tonight. And uh, uh, thank you all for making this show pretty popular, and it's growing every day. And I appreciate everything you guys do. With that, everybody take care. Good night.